What is up, my friends and fellow busy bees? Today, I wanted to follow up on a promise that I made you in a previous episode to bring you different ways to drill new hardware holes and ways to measure the drawer front or whatever it is that you're going to be putting the hardware on in order to figure out how to center it and where to drill those holes. It's one of the least favorite parts of furniture refinishing for me, or it was at least until I found one of these solutions, because it's pretty high stakes, like in the grand scheme of furniture refinishing, because there's really no huge disasters that can come from the things that you do. Everything can always be undone. You can always sand it down, strip it back, whatever. But like drilling a hole into something is going to require a little bit more effort to fill it and make it look smooth again if you were to do it incorrectly. So although it can be repaired, it just can't be undone quite as quickly as some of the other things. So it feels very high stakes in the moment, at least. There's always the second guessing and like the squinting at it to make sure it's perfectly center. You know, you start looking at it and being like, does that look right? Because it's like so hard to tell until you actually get the holes drilled in. But we just have different ways of learning. So I like to offer different solutions for people who have maybe more of an analytical brain or more of a visual, creative understanding and spatial awareness. Like I feel like different types of brains lean towards different methods of completing tasks. So I will bring those to you today. And to start out, just a couple of questions that you can ask yourself when you are approaching a piece of furniture that you need to drill new hardware holes for. So one of the instances that you may come across is that you're working on a piece that has two holes per drawer because there were handles there previously, but maybe based on the design that you're thinking up, or maybe you have a client that you're doing custom work for, and they want to just put a knob, a singular knob, in the center of that drawer. I've encountered that before, and obviously your instinct is to patch up those holes and drill a new hole for the knob. However... I would just, as someone who likes to take the path of least resistance whenever possible, ask yourself if whether you can fill in one side of the set of holes and use the other one instead of having to drill new ones, because ultimately that will save you so much time. Typically, it would be the inner hole, like the hole closest to the center of the piece, if we're thinking of a dresser, for example. There may actually be four holes on that drawer if there was two handles. But is there an option to just keep the inner hole and use that as a knob versus having all four? Or even if it's something like a side table that had two holes, is there one of those holes that would be essentially at the center or not look like it was off center if you kept it? Sometimes it's no, but sometimes it does work. I did a dresser fairly recently where we just filled the inner holes and kept the outer ones on dresser drawers. So essentially there was two handles previously. We wanted to have two knobs and just the way that the spacing had been and the placement of the previous hardware, it kind of worked out perfect to just have two knobs, one on each side of the drawer front and just use the existing holes and fill the other two. Work smarter, not harder. Just look at it. It may not work out, but sometimes it may, and that will save you the hassle. Another question worth asking yourself is whether you're able to find different hardware instead of having to fill the holes and drill new ones. Because yes, sometimes you maybe come across hardware that's going to be perfect for a certain design, and you find the piece that's going to work great for it, and you're wanting to make that work, and you know, you have a one track mind and so you're going to do what it takes to make that work. That's totally fair. I get it. Once you're inspired, you want to like execute appropriately. And also sometimes when you're doing custom work, clients may have their eye on a certain handle or knob, or maybe they're trying to match existing hardware in their home. So you're having to stick to that. That's all cool. But If you're just kind of using whatever, using something in your stash because you have it, consider whether or not there's other hardware options that you could use that would fit to that whole spacing. That might mean using the old hardware that was on it already and maybe doing something to jazz it up. I've mentioned on previous episodes different ways of doing that, but cleaning it, putting a wax on it, painting it, modifying them in some way, there's lots of options to do that. I'll link some episodes in the show notes that you can check out if you're interested learning more about that. 
And also, there's adjustable hardware out there too. So it will fit in a range from, say, one inch to five inches long versus having to find perfectly spaced 3.25 inch handles. You can just get a bunch of those adjustable ones and those would fit perfectly. So there are options. You can also DIY your own adjustable ones, but it's just worth asking and perusing as an option, especially if you're someone that hates filling and measuring and drilling new holes. Okay, so the first way that you can do that measurement, if you decide you're definitely going ahead with drilling new holes, is an old school way of just measuring it out. So you want to have a tape measure, a level, and you want to have a pencil. And essentially, you're going to look at whatever it is, whether it's a drawer front or a door. You want to measure the length and the width of that drawer front. So maybe it's 30 inches wide by 10 inches tall. And then you want to find the center point of both of those. So for 10 inches tall, the center point would be 5 inches. For 30 inches across, the center point would be 15 inches. And so you want to mark where that center point is. That center point, assuming that you're just putting one handle, you're going to have to divide it by four or whatever, depending on how much you got going on for this certain design. But assuming that we're working with one piece of hardware on that piece, that center point would be where you would drill your hole for a single knob. And if you're going to be using a handle, then that would be the center of the handle that you're going to be using. So the next thing you need to know is the measurement of the handle that you have. And the important number for you to note for this is the length from the center of where you would put the screw in on one end of that handle to the center point of where the screw goes in on the other side. Let's assume that it's four inches because it's pretty common and that's easy math for me. So if that's four inches, then I'm going to measure two inches on either side, left and right of that hole, and that's going to be where I want the holes to be drilled. However, you're going to use your level to make sure that those dots are level and centered still on that center point, because especially if it's a handle, you're definitely going to notice it, particularly if it's a straight line, if it's a little bit crooked or askew once you get that on the piece and there's especially multiple drawers lined up side by side, you'll really notice if there's any that aren't quite level. So take the time to ensure that that is perfectly level. Double, triple check your measurements before you actually drill through. But that is the straightforward old school way. Now, if you have not quite so beautifully rounded numbers, Get a calculator, let it do the work, learn what the different ticks on your tape measure mean so that you can do the appropriate markings for, you know, a quarter inch or whatever. And especially for people who are very mathematical, scientific women in STEM, I'm going to assume that your brain works best with that method because it's precise, it's based in numbers, based in reality, and you're like, I can trust that. Another option that's similar to that, but like, will make your life a little bit quicker is to make a guide that you can use as a template and use that on multiple pieces. So this is really handy if you have a dresser drawer, for example, that you're going to be measuring. You're going to cut a piece of cardboard that is the same size as the drawer front that you're going to be drilling into. And then you're going to do that same method of figuring out the center point, figure out where you would need to drill the holes for the hardware that you have. And then once you make those marks, make sure that you indicate which part of the template is up, which part is down. Theoretically, it'll be in the center anyway, so it won't make a difference. However, sometimes there can be, you know, it might not be the actual center of the old drawer front, depending what shape it is. So make sure you indicate that if you need to. And then where you put the two holes to drill into the piece, Get something sharp like a pair of scissors or a pin or the end of your X-Acto knife and push through the cardboard so that it pokes all the way through to the other side. And then when you're going to mark the holes on the dresser or whatever it is that you're going to be drilling the holes into, you line that template up on the drawer front, make sure everything's lining up nicely, and then just take your pencil and draw your holes through the little holes that you had poked through, and that will be where you go to drill your holes. It's just the measurement way, but much quicker, so you can replicate that accurately multiple times over, which will add up, especially if you have like an eight drawer dresser. It saves you a lot of time. Now, will that template be useful for any other piece? Probably not, but that's why you use just like some scrap cardboard, look in your recycling bin and see if there's anything. If you've gotten any packages recently, 
It'll help make you feel better about the money that you spend on whatever came in. Spending money to make money, you know what I mean? This next method is the thing that has saved me from the pure hell that I found marking and measuring and doing all of this. I don't know why I do not have a very number centric brain. Like when you start getting into like, obviously, I can do the straightforward numbers, you know, off the top of my head, I divided 30 by two. So not a big deal. But when you start getting into like the decimals and converting that into like centimeters, inches, whatever. No, no, thank you. Not for me. So the thing that was a very, very small investment for me and my business was to get a cabinet hardware jig. Essentially what it is, is a plastic version of the template that I mentioned you would make out of cardboard, but reusable. So it is a plastic square, essentially, and on the back of it, it has almost like a little shelf that you adjust so that it sits on the top of the drawer front that you're going to be drilling into. So you're marking where the top of it is, you figure out where the center point is of the height of that drawer and the center point of the width, and you slide the circles, there's like adjustable holes essentially, to the correct spot. So you find the center point and then again looking at your hardware, You adjust the little holes so that they fall where you would mark those spots for drilling. So again, you're having to do the math, obviously. You have to figure out where the center point is, but it makes it so much easier. And then again, you can lock those in place and you can move that around, use it as a template. And because both the hole placements and the little shelf on the back are adjustable, you can reuse that on future pieces. There's little like tape measures, essentially, like little notches on the plastic unit itself. So you can measure just using that thing and I just find it so much easier whatever it is about the setup just makes my brain work a little bit better and it saved me a lot of time I want to say it was like $13 at Home Depot mine's from the brand Craig K-R-E-G I'll link it in the show notes of this episode but it works fabulous for me it's great just a very handy tool to have around now another thing you can do and be more or less precise with if you would like is to just get two pieces of tape, like scotch tape or painter's tape if you wish, and roll those up, like you would make a little roll to like hang something on the wall, like reverse roll, if that makes sense, and put them on the back of the hardware where you would put the screw. And then by either measuring, or if you want, you can eyeball it. There have been times when I have eyeballed it, especially if it's just one thing, like on a side table, for example. If you just squint a little bit, you can usually figure it out pretty close. Just put that on the back of the piece of hardware and then stick it down. Once it's taped to the drawer front or whatever it is that you're going to be drilling through, just hold the tape down while you pull the hardware up. And then you can just drill right through the tape if you so choose. Another way of doing this, which I do a lot of the time when I'm hanging art and things on my walls, is to figure out where you want roughly to put it. Again, you can measure or you can eyeball it. But on the back of the hardware, grab some toothpaste, especially if you have white toothpaste, like a Colgate or something. Put a little dab on your finger and then lightly dab the toothpaste around the edge of where you would insert the screw on the hardware on both sides. And then just press that against the drawer front or whatever you're going to drill into. And it will leave two perfect little circles there of where you would drill inside of. I find that really helpful too because although you can make a dot and then that's where you'll drill, sometimes it can end up like a little bit slightly too far to the left or slightly too far to the right so that it's like kind of awkward trying to make the hardware fit when the screws are attached. Like sometimes you almost have to like extend one of the holes in one direction. So doing that method makes sure that you can see like where the absolute center is of that screw inside of that hole so that you can make sure that you're getting it in nice and perfectly straight and centered. And when you're actually drilling the holes, make sure that you are above the hole, that the drill that you're holding is centered, it is straight up and down, you're not going in at an angle. You're holding both the drill and the drawer front or whatever you're drilling into firmly or you have it clamped to something so that it stays in place. Make sure that you're wearing protective eyewear. Make sure that you are in good lighting. And if you are in the midst of doing this and you are frustrated, don't worry. A lot of us don't like this part. 
And something you may not know about me, I love little motivational messages. They always get me fired up, and I keep a running list of ones that are especially catchy or speak to me in the Notes app on my phone. So I end every podcast episode with one that I've noted down over the years in hopes that you leave our time here each week feeling inspired, motivated, and ready to take on whatever comes your way this week. This week's Mel's motivational message is something that I'm actually going to talk about in next week's episode. I had started recording it today, and then I feel like I just need to compile my thoughts about it a little bit better before I explain it, because it would have had a lot of rambling otherwise. But it's at very top of mind right now, and it is that expectation setting is perspective setting. Make sure you come back next week to hear what I mean by that. All right, that's it for now. I appreciate your time and I will catch you guys next week.